What is it good for? Absolutely nothing. Say it again. Um, all right. I'm still on the road. Should be coming home sometime today, but it's time uh, once again uh, for allow me to be frank. And well, it's been uh, a crazy week. I've been uh, here, there, everywhere, and the Mets are finally home. That's but right. The, Met the Mets are home, and you're not, Frank. Yeah. I mean, the road trip was originally supposed to be uh, down to Birmingham, watch USFL, over to Jacksonville, pick up a few items uh, from Doug's uh, place there, and back up. But duty called me to Dallas, <laughs> and uh, we've been winding our way back home since uh, since Sunday. Went can to you Oklahoma. Can you walk us through before before you mention Oklahoma, and of course we want to hear more about about your trip. But can you walk us through what led you guys to Dallas? Uh, well. There's a, uh, a a show that uh, Barstool puts out that uh, I'm basically the backup for. Um, the show will be released in August. Okay. Uh, and you know what show I'm talking about. I have to eat, eat like a bowl of ice cream. <laughs> Sunday oh, conversation. Oh, um, Sunday conversation. Yep. Love it. So I did that in Dallas on Friday. There was a possibility I could have done a second episode. So they had us, had me and Doug on standby in Dallas for a couple of days. Is if the Rangers won game seven, we would have had to go down to Houston on Tuesday. Why is that? Another uh, Sunday conversation. You can't say who who these were with or who it would have I been with. Can't say who they were with. Can't say. But the uh, the one uh, the one I would record it on Friday that will be should be out in August. Was it anyone you're a fan of? Like like did you were you excited meeting this person or was it just it was like just a famous person who you've heard of but you're not really like it, you're you don't really follow or are a fan of? I could tell you it's an athlete. It's an athlete. Okay. It's an athlete. Okay. Yes. Is it a Dallas athlete? I won't go any further. No further. It's Luka Doncic. That's who it is. I already know. It has to be. Could Maybe be in Dallas. Dirk yeah. Nowitzki. Those are the uh, only two people from Dallas. I, I, really I can't with. say who it is, so don't even ask anymore. Yes, sir. Jack Prescott. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, that's fun. What, did you go to any sporting events in Dallas? The, the Rangers were out of town, and every other minor league team in Texas was out of town. Okay, well. And you weren't near Houston. Houston's, Houston's like two hours from Dallas, so it's yeah. not even like you yeah. could have gone to an Astros game. Yep, uh, and uh, what was uh, interesting was uh, Saturday, with a whole day to kill, we decided to go uh, check out the Sixth Floor Museum. How was that? You know, well, it, it, it's a it's a American tragedy. Uh, uh, you get to actually, uh, they have uh, they basically like have two glassed off areas. They have one glassed off area where the gun was found, and they have the they have uh, I don't think it's the, the actual gun, but it's a it's a gun that's like the gun that uh, Oswald used. Okay. Because I think the the gun that he actually uses in the National Archives. I'm but so glad. Like, I'm really glad you brought this up because I I, I had totally forgot you guys were posting pictures uh, that you and Doug's were investigating what happened. Yeah, so they have like uh, so they have like uh, the the sniper's nest with the books, the boxes of books where he hid behind, and the window he he ain't, he shot out of. Yeah, you could go up to the seventh floor, and they have like uh, what the build the history of the building itself on the seventh floor. And then you could actually go to that, go to a corner, and look out the window of the seventh floor, which is one floor above where he actually was at on the sixth floor. And you could uh, look down the uh, the plaza. There's a big X uh, right on the uh, right on the uh, at the spot where 
the shot took place. Uh, so after going through the the, uh, the sixth floor in India, they have uh, the Zapruder camera at the sixth floor museum. So then you go down to Dili Plaza, walk. Uh, so I walked over Dili Plaza, it was 100 degrees. Very hot, very hot in Texas. My roommate from college was visiting Hoboken this weekend, staying with me, and he lives in Dallas right now. So yeah, he was like excited to get away from the from the 95, 100 degree heat. So I went over to uh, the grassy knoll, stood behind a picket fence, and uh, basically looked around the whole area where the uh, the, the JFK assassination took place. What'd you find? <laughs> that basically it's a much easier shot from behind a picket fence. <laughs> do you think it was uh, there's like there's a lot of crazy conspiracies to it? Like, do you believe any of them? Do you think maybe it was like a setup or anything like that? No, it was a total setup. Uh, Kennedy ran a foul with the uh, CIA. Because he basically threw the CIA under the bus with the Bay of Pigs invasion. Then after uh, the Cuban Missile Crisis, he agreed to not invade Cuba again. And the CIA had a plan to take out Castro. And he basically says, no, we can't do that now. Because Russia took the missiles away from Cuba. So we have to like uh, abide by the agreement I set. Which basically meant that Castro was safe. He was never going to be taken out. We weren't going to back any way to take him out. And the CIA basically wanted him to do that. The mafia was involved heavily in Cuba. And the mafia and the CIA were basically in bed together. There was a lot of uh, the CIA and the mafia. And so... You got the CIA and the mafia tied together. As it should be. Then, and, and, and if you watch Godfather 2, you know how much the mafia was involved in Cuba. Yep, that's right. And uh, at the same time, Kennedy is looking ahead to election in 64, and he's probably going to win. I mean, is he had a fairly high approval rating? Didn't now? He, now in Texas, he faced kind of a, a crunch. He back then you didn't cho- really choose your running mate. Your running mate got foisted foisted upon you. And Kennedy kind of wanted to get rid of Johnson. They clashed. They didn't like each other. Johnson actually wanted to do, uh, was siding with the CIA. Uh, Kennedy was a little luke, was a little lukewarm about going into Vietnam. Johnson wanted to go into Vietnam, and supposedly there were the, the, the two of them were starting to fight, not not see eye to eye, and Johnson was going to be off the ticket. So. CIA and Johnson basically got together, went to Dallas, a town that Johnson obviously knows, and set the holding up. And and uh, Lee Harvey Oswald actually was a member of the CIA. That's freaky. He, yeah, he was a member of the CIA, and um, he had uh, he had defected to Russia. But he he had done that to set himself up as a as a potential spy to, to infiltrate communist groups. So they called upon this assassination, and essentially they set up Oswald. They basically destroyed that threw him under the bus. And when he started talking about being a patsy. They had to take him out, and that's why our Jack Ruby came in. And they have Jack Ruby's hat at the uh, Six Four uh, Museum. It's such an unbelievable saga, but definitely, and definitely true. I I feel like when we're sitting at Dealey Plaza watching uh, 
the, the the spot where JFK was shot, there was a car that was circling. QAnon car saying that uh, JFK Jr. is alive and supports Trump. Makes sense. So, so yeah, there's this convertible with these Trump flags and this one uh, thing that was basically Trump, JFK Jr. 2024. Oh, my God. Whatever happened to JFK Jr.? He died. Oh, he did die. So wait, wait, so they're saying so there's another conspiracy saying he's alive and that he supports Trump. Yeah, that he's alive and has to be in hiding because he knows too much. Oh my god. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Nothing would surprise me at this point. Yeah, JFK Jr. The uh, night he actually the night before he died, he was at a Yankees game. And um he was an amateur pilot. Mm. He had just gotten married, uh, and he was with like his his wife, uh, his wife and sister in law, I believe. And um, they took off, I think, from like a small airport, like in New Jersey, and they're going to they're trying to fly to um, Martha's Vineyard. Mm-hmm. And he shouldn't have been flying. He was a a amateur fi- pilot who f- was, and he's trying to fly at at sunset at dusk. And probably had and been drinking got- the night before. Yeah, maybe. And he got a little disoriented, and uh, he crashed. Yeah, he crashed in the uh, in the ocean. I think they did find the wreckage, but he crashed just uh, just just before getting to Martha's Vineyard. Holy shit! Yeah. So yeah, amateur pilot. You know how that happens. Yeah, Roy Holiday. Yep. Same plane, I, too. Yeah. I, and I think it was the same type of plane as Roy Holiday. As Roy Holiday, yeah, probably. If he was, if he was flying like one of those small planes, as an am, like a lot of amateur pilots do. Yeah. Holiday was, was drinking. Flying? Holiday was drinking and and I think on on drugs or pills or something too. Like he he had a lot of substance problems that people didn't know about and depression. And I think I think he was under the influence when he was flying around too. Yeah. Have you, that was a sad have story. you guys ever seen that um, that Denzel Washington movie? Or oh, I think it was called Flight or whatever. And he was he was like coked up, landing that plane, but it wasn't his fault. No, no, no I, I, I haven't. Point. I haven't seen that, but I I kind of wish that I I have. I mean, maybe I'll add that to my list. It's a true. Well, it's a, it's a true story. So he he basically he like had a coke problem. He had a huge drinking problem, and the night he was he was like hammered driving uh, flying the plane, but. The engine went out. It wasn't his fault. He successfully landed it, landed it, but they tried to blame him because he was like under the uh, influence. Yeah. And his case was like, you know, I, if I wasn't under the influence, I might have not landed it correctly. So, not a good, not a good guy, but still. I'm be- I'm a better pilot when I'm <laughs> fucked up. Yeah. So that's <laughs> what I say about driving. Just kidding. Don't drink and drive. <laughs> Don't um, drink and drive, kids. Frank, could you could you ever see yourself flying a plane? No. And I, I just got to mention, Frank, this week's recording from last week's recording is just like we could definitely tell that you did not drink mocha today. Just want to throw that out there. You look so tired. And look, compared to last week, you were jumping, yeah. running around. You look exhausted. And I feel like this uh, road trip is taking a toll on you. Uh, we got one more stop. We're going to watch the Lehigh Valley Iron Pigs tonight. <laughs> Oh and then hopefully uh, get into New Jersey sometime around one o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Oof. And what are you going to do tomorrow? You Just sleep. I don't know. I'm going to try to get in the office at some point. I hope. <sighs> Frank, you're a machine. Yeah. Content never stops. When are you coming to a Mets game? You haven't been to a Mets game in a long time. Well, they haven't been home in a long time. Now we got seven straight. Yep, I'll I'll be at Saturday's game for sure. Saturday, I'm actually not. I'm I'm I was there last night. I'm going the next three nights, and then I'm not going Saturday, Sunday because Father's Day. And then uh, I'm I'm going Monday. We have a getaway day matinee against the Marlins, which is so yeah. weird to have a Monday a Monday getaway day. 
Yeah, maybe I'll uh, I'll, I'll I'll see if I could get to Monday's game too. Yeah, you should. That's I I love matinees, but I, I, it's kind of a pain in the ass the day after Father's Day having to be back there in the morning. But, but then they go. Um, they're they're going. So this is the first time, weirdly enough, that we're this far into the season and they haven't played the Marlins yet this year. But now they're about to play them seven times in the span of a week. I'm thinking about maybe. Yeah, uh, another trip uh, in uh, September. The Mets play the Marlins in Miami, September 10th. Dolphins. And the Dolphins uh, season opener is the next day. Yeah, that would be a, a oh two, nice killing two birds with one stone for you. You should you should consider that. Yeah. I'm going to Miami uh, a week from tomorrow, actually, for the Mets to cover the Mets Marlins series. Not going to Houston. Um, too hot there, and just too far. But Miami, oh, yeah, uh, it's going to be hot in Miami too. I don't know what I'm saying, but yeah, it's been it's it's been a crazy road trip. It's it really has been. Yeah, no, it has. It has. I mean, uh, I've seen uh, a lot of states now. Uh, I mean, uh, how many states? I get so many bullshit fucking phone calls. <laughs> Who is it? The hyenas? I, I, I'm i getting spammed to fucking death. <laughs> Please, I want to hear. You got to answer the next one. <laughs> do, do the hyenas still Spam call you, Frank? Frank? Yeah, they basically now have set up a, a put my number on a lot of a bullshit things. So so now what? Is it them calling you or did they sign you up for things that you get called? They sign me up like... for things. I'm getting calls from them. Oh my god! Are you sure it's the hyenas or or what? I Is don't it... know. I don't know. Well, Frank, you've been What's on the, the road a lot. Story? You're tired. You're worn out, but you've definitely seen a lot. I'm sure you've eaten a lot of good hot dogs too. Yep. I mean, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah basically, uh, so you, you know the story. Yeah, uh, we went down to uh, USFL, watched a couple games in uh, Birmingham. We. Uh, Went over to Doug's place in Jacksonville, and then up to uh, Atlanta. Watched the Braves game, oh. where I got accosted by the mascot. And they put the mascot's Braves hat on Frank. Yeah. Frank, how much backlash did you get for that? Well, well it's Clem, you know, Clem, uh, Clem and KFC. Don't want, don't want to realize that I'm a true fan. I mean, uh, that, that KFC and Clem thinks everything is sunshine and roses. And the Braves, meanwhile, have won 13 in a row. Uh, they played the, 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 the after they played the, uh, the, the, uh, the national. And basically, they've won 13 in a row playing the last place Rockies, the beyond last place A's, who might be, and, and they're no longer the Oakland A's. They're now the Oakland A's. <laughs> the Oakland ass. Yeah, I saw you tweeted that. They, they play in the worst stadium in baseball. Yeah, and they they just wave the white towel. As which do you realize we were locked out for a hundred days, and one of the main main arguments was tanking. And I feel like tanking is more prevalent than ever now. Like it, like what did the lockout do to to fix tanking? You have the Pirates, you have the A's, you have the Nationals, you have the Cubs. Like those teams all did not try to compete this year, and they're not even competitive on the field. The Rockies too. I mean, they dished out the huge Chris Bryant con- contract, but they they're terrible. When I was at the Braves game, and boy, that that stadium is not good. They 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 have the upper deck is not that wheelchair accessible. How are they going to do that? I mean, they they have the second deck. It's got the the ramps has and and uh, you can get up there, but there's no elevator up to the third deck. There's only stairs. And that's a new and park like, too. How, and there's how like are a they... catwalk. There's like a catwalk that's you know, behind the press box, and you have to go on that catwalk behind the press box and then up to your seat. That's insane. I'm I'm going there in July for the Mets Brave series for the first time and. Um, I just I, I don't get it. It's a it's a new ballpark. I don't know how do they have like such out. I mean I, I didn't see much of the stadium because I was kind of like in a tight area, so I didn't even get a chance to do a hot dog review. I say I didn't want to leave my seat and go up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down stairs. Jeez. 
And then the, and then the mascot like uh, notified Doug's like in the second inning he was gonna go. Where where are you guys sitting? Oh God. Yeah, where did, what what he run into Doug's and and was like, oh, I want to come come to your no, section. No, uh, he knew we were coming and. Uh, he How do you actually help? has he, he's a barstool guy. He's a barstool guy, okay. And he has an ongoing feud with Big Cat. What how come? Oh Bloopy? Yes. How'd that happen? I don't know. But one day he uh put uh you know the picture of Big Cat in his Wisconsin sweater doing this? Yeah. He put that he posted himself doing that. And he has in his bio father of Big Cat. Oh my God! He uh, <laughs> so they they started beef because I think Big Cat would always tweet at him and be like, "Fuck you, Bloopy! He, he's an ugly <laughs> mascot." And then one day Bloopy clapped back on Twitter and it was like, "No, screw you!" So ever since they had this like beef, it's pretty comical. Yeah. And um, yeah, it's nuts. Yeah. So he comes up and the Braves are, are just the the, the the A's actually had the, the had a two one lead. And then uh, this this rookie pitcher who is played in Australia and independent leagues, they find the Braves finally broke through in the fifth inning, and that's just at the moment where a, a blooper comes up. It was um, replica ring night, oh. so he comes up nice. with a ring on a fishing pole and he starts like dangling it in front of me. <laughs> this guy's then, ultimate troll. Daddy goes over to me and takes his hat off and puts it on my head. Saw Ultimate that. betrayal. Uh, the uh, the Braves, meanwhile, are taking the lead. He likes high five. He's high fiving everyone, and I just sit there with my arms crossed. And then you post a thing, <laughs> violation. His hair like <laughs> hanging. Oh my god. So yeah, I got, I got. Uh, so yeah, that was my experience with the Braves mascot and watching that game. As the Oakland ass, every player on the team had a batting average of 220 or fewer. There was only two batters in the, the, the only two batters that the A's had were batting over uh, over 210. They had uh, th- uh, f- like four hitters in their lineup were batting uh, under uh, under 200, and like uh, Stephen Volk was batting. Uh, Clean up and batting 075. Oh my God. Reminds me of the John Mayberry days batting cleanup. I, I mean, the team is awful. But Frank, they have a $33 million payroll. Same with the Reds, too. I, I left the Reds out, but they're also terrible. The Reds have played better lately. And, yeah, and they're the, going to sell more players, too. Yeah, but the Reds had a team that was close, that was contending for a wild card spot last year and then they tore it down and are and the A's so, too fucking terrible the, the A's, A's too the A's, the A's too they missed the playoffs by like one game last year and tore no, it down they missed it by more than that all right but they they had what 86 or 87 wins like they were yeah 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 they they uh they they, they, they actually traded for uh, uh Starling Marte yep and, they uh, did to try to uh, to try to uh make playoffs yeah and they had a really talented team I mean, you had a, they had a rotation with Bassett, Manaya, Montez. Um, they had Marte. They had Canna. They had. I mean, Canna wasn't as good as he's been playing now, but um, they had a really good team, and then they just tore it down. Yeah, they Chapman. missed the wild card. But they missed the wild card by six games. Finished third place behind the um, the Mariners. Uh, they collapsed. They, uh, they collapsed too, though, Frank. They they were in a playoff spot pretty much for most of the year. Yeah, yeah, they they kind of like uh, the Yankees they, caught them with that streak. Yeah, they they had the they were they had a they had a bad September twelve and fifteen, and uh, and basically they were uh, like uh, the most of the first half of the season they were in uh, for they were they were in good position and then yeah. kind of had a mediocre July a me uh, a. A so-so August and a, and a mediocre September, and that was basically the end. Frank, that was also the um, – that that was uh, like the Padres, too. The Padres had such a big lead, it feels like, and they were they were in a good position all oh, year. Oh, no, the, the, the Padres time. just imploded last year. They imploded. 
So now the Braves are only because of the Braves' easy schedule. The Mets haven't even played bad. They had a five and five road trip. Uh, they won again last night. They're still they're forty one and twenty two. The Braves are now five games back. Went from ten and a half yeah. to five games back yeah. because. Yeah. Yeah, dirty game winning streak against like 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 the the dude like teams that don't even compete. It it mm-hmm. started Frank. It started on June first. They beat the Diamondbacks, and then since then swept the Rockies for four games, swept yeah. the A's in two games, swept the Pirates in four games. About to sweep the Nationals today, and then they're playing the Cubs for three more. And the Cubs uh, yeah. might be like. No offense, but uh, I don't even care about offending the Cubs. The Cubs are fucking embarrassment. The Yankees. They they, they fucking suck. What they ran did them the off Yankees the field. last week. They, 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 the they, they, Frank Schwindel pit throwing a 35 mile per hour palm balls. They're embarrassing. It was so stupid. Yeah. Frankie Schwindel. Frankie Schwindel might be a good story that he made the majors, but you know what? He's not a good player. <laughs> It's just like the, you're a big market. What Chicago is the isn't it the second? It's the second or third biggest market behind third, New York and right. LA. It's the third, and and to put a team like that on the field, like the fans should be furious. I know they well, yeah, to rebuild, but it's well, what the Cubs did was embarrassing. Emba- now like, I understand it's not competitive. They did they they won that 2016 World Series and they have done nothing. No, yeah. no, they haven't done nothing to improve. They made bonehead moves in the off season, and then they they make these goofball hey, moves. Chris Bryant, Chris Bryant should have been a Cub for life. Now, I, I he's not having a great year, granted. Uh, Anthony he Rizzo, made the for, yeah, Rizzo is in 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 the year. Cubs' defense. In the Cubs' defense, they offered extensions to Baez and Rizzo better than the deals that those two teams got. El- those two players got elsewhere. So yeah. that that's where you need to kind of argue that I guess Bryant they just Bryant was never the player he was in his first two seasons. He was still good, a nice player, but he's been up and down. And he's just not. He wasn't the MVP that he was in the beginning of his career, a game changer. Um, Rizzo and Baez at least, but Baez is sucking this year too. And Baez is Baez has just been a train wreck in Detroit. Been, I think he's doing a buck ninety three right now. Like it is it, it's awful his batting right now. So it's. Terrible. Uh, Javier, but, but, Baez, Javier Baez has been a train wreck in Detroit. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, 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 and, and he doesn't even he doesn't even look like he gives a fuck about anything. He took right. an extra fifteen million to go to a, a team that had has a good farm system. Maybe was on the come up, but that's why he got the opt out. And and you yeah. know what? He's he's not performing. Yeah, listen to this. Among the 157 qualified hitters in baseball, Javier Baez ranks dead last in WRC plus. What is his what is his weighted runs created? What number? Uh, let me see. Because, uh, I'm looking at Chris Castellani's uh, article that came out just a few minutes ago. Hmm. <clears throat> yeah, he's basically striking out like every pitch now, every batter now. Yeah, uh, I, I think he only has like I don't even I, I don't, yeah, let me look at his stats. It was his stats. Was, he is having a terrible season in Detroit. He swings at everything, yeah. every yeah. single pitch he swings at. It could be it could be five feet away. You know what I'm saying? That's the problem. I, so I'm I, I saw him. Know. I saw him do that with the Mets, even though he, he overall had a, a pretty good year, a pretty good uh, uh, yeah stretch with the Mets. Forty-seven games. He actually. Uh, in the beginning, he was wild swinging, and then he turned it around because he was going. He was going to be a free agent. He he became more disciplined, and he was a better player. And then obviously went right back to it after he got paid. He said, "I'm going to just be the player that I have been, and made a career like it." And it just doesn't. Right it's now, not he has a uh, hundred. He's batting 188. 188 his OPS yeah. is his OPS is 519. Oh, homers and he's, RBIs. He's got three homers, 16 RBI. God. I mean. He's sitting on all that money. He's, 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 he's struck out 53 times already. He's struck out 53 times in 50 games. The Mets dodged a bullet not bringing Baez back, not bringing Stroman yep. back, not bringing Syndergaard back. Those three. Getting you rid know, of those three was addition by subtraction. It, 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 
the, 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 remember Todd Hill said he goes, well, the, the Mets didn't. It look it, 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 Conforto, it, it, not it, Conforto back too. And, and well, yeah, and and if the rumors are true about the bachelor party thing, that he was horsing around at a bachelor party and that's how he got hurt. You heard that rumor, right? I've heard that rumor. Mm-hmm. I, I I can't con- I am unable to confirm that. Um, but that's one of the conspiracies that's floating around. Yeah. It, it, it shows you that that that, that, that it looks like the Mets are actually now looking to get character guys in their uh, in their uh, in the locker. What did they do have that? But Frank, uh, what did Todd Zeal say? He basically what he actually said this on SNY. He goes, he goes, he go, then he been assessing the Mets all season. He goes, well, you know, the, this year the Mets uh, looked to uh, the guys that they that left the team are guys that are not good for the locker. They were bad guys, yep. and, and mainly it was seen as a slide at Stroman. Because Stroman came out and saying that yeah, Gio was stuck in an old Stone Age baseball. Oh, yeah, I saw that. Racist. Well, 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 yeah, well, guess what? Marcus Stroman just switched agencies for the second time in the last few months this year, and now he's working. He's back with uh, Brody Van Wagenen, who traded for him when he, was, uh, when he came to the Mets. Brody Van Wagenen. I, I mean, every player he got was one of his clients. Yeah, pretty much. Cano and and Degrom, like everyone. Yeah, but you know, it, 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 it's actually a wonder the Mets were able to turn it around that quickly with, with the this, damage he did. With, with the damage that Strowman did. And uh, the, the the thing that he's been lucky about is that Jared Kornelnik is basically struggling. He that he he that he's pretty much not been this player that he's expected to be yeah and he he had so much so many expectations so much hype and just he hasn't put it not saying he's not going to put it together everybody just he's really struggled really struggled in in his short stints in the in the big leagues last year and, and this year um and and it was just isn't it so weird that the mariners dfa'd him before he was supposed to play the mets well, Cinder guard got go. eight days rest and and avoiding the mets like what what's next in yeah, july that's a pussy uh, move. Let's see if Stroman pitches against the Mets in July. Probably not. Well, you know, he was uh, he's on the injured list, and he avoided pitching against the Yankees last week. Of course he did. But but just the fact that he, he already had to change agencies again, he's changed agencies twice because he doesn't like being told no. Marcus Stroman is, without a doubt, the most self-centered prick in baseball. Yeah, I'm not not a fan of him. Uh, in Chicago, either. I don't think a lot of people like him over here. He's he's two and five. He's five three two. two. He he could go out there and get hammered, make it get lost. He makes one fucking web gem play, and he's like, I I know I gave up eight runs, but hey, look look at the play I made. I'm oh my god, forty two times. Yeah, we <laughs> so he about the good things. he he did pitch a really good game against the San Francisco Giants, the one hundred and seven win Giants last year. In San Francisco in August, uh, what he went like into the eighth inning and gave up like three runs, and the Mets lost three to two because their offense was abysmal. And they lost, and right after he's he's retweeting his web gem highlight off the mound like eighty times, and that's when it was a whole big thing. And that's when he stormed off the press conference with us afterwards, saying, "Man, I'm done answering these guys' questions." And um and and I tweeted that out, and that's when I got blocked by him. Well, but, he, he didn't. I, I think yeah. I, I think the, I don't remember. Exact score again, but I think I think he gave up like four runs. Is he gave up like a pair of two run homers? No, it was it was I believe it was it was three runs and and they lost like three to two because. But didn't uh, he give up like a, a home run or a couple of home runs? I I, th- I think maybe maybe like a two run homer and and a solo homer or something. Yeah, but like I mean, just the fact he like didn't he, pitch, he didn't pitch poorly, but he didn't pitch great. If, if he pitched his deepest start into the season, I mean, like 20 out of his 33 starts were six innings or less last year. He just really didn't give length very often. Um, and he always was like 85 pitches was like his limit. But the thing was, here's the problem. And here's why it's such a such an addition that he left for this team and this clubhouse is that when the team lost, he wasn't pissed off. He didn't care as long as he pitched well. Then he mm-hmm. didn't care. Like that's that's really the way it came off with him. Um, there were a lot of things Selfish. last year, but, but that's the thing, Frank. That's why, like you and some other people, I, I have a friend of mine too who's pretty pessimistic, like you, a Mets fan. Um, 
you can't compare last year to this year, no matter what. No, it's, just because it's a lot different. The personalities, the veteran leadership, the track records, the performance, the coaching staff, Buck Showalter, Billy Epler, like it's it's totally different. Jacob DeGrom, the Mets lead the league with 10 shutouts. They're 19 games over 500. Jacob DeGrom has not thrown a pitch this season. Yeah, and Max you know Scherzer's been on the IL. You know someone who I like on the coaching staff? Eric Chavez. Well, besides him, I do like him. Um, Wayne Kirby. Well, Jeremy Hefner. He, he's he's you gotta love Jeremy Hefner on this staff. Yeah, he's, yeah. He's been a budding star for years, though. Joey Cora. And why is that? Yes, he looks like a third base coach that actually is alive, awake, and has a pulse. You know, no, he didn't have a good reputation in Pittsburgh. For at the, yeah. as they they didn't like him as a third base coach because he was a little uh, he was too aggressive, but yeah he's he's done a good job here and and he's just the fact of like Buck came in and Buck is so anal about the details and the rules and everything, like he knows everything front and back of his hand like he he really really is. We've seen baseball go towards like the front office controlling the teams and the managers. That's not Buck. Like Buck is in the driver's seat during the games. Like he knows so much. He gives them such an advantage, but he did bring in a veteran coaching staff, whether it be Cora or Wayne Kirby. Um, I mean, who was the GM last year? What was his name? Zach Scott? Zach Scott was acting GM because Jared Porter got fired. And and, and Louis Rojas basically is letting Zach Scott run the place. And and they bring in this this idiot, Hugh Quattlebaum. Well, here's the problem, and we keep talking about this. We've talked about this a lot, really, since, since last year, but... Zach Scott is the one who made the misjudgment. You take your time in spring training to get to know your hitting coach, gain that trust, and whatever it may be. They fired Chili Davis a month into the season instead of doing it. If he was going to do it, you don't evaluate during the season. You make the change in spring training so that your team and your your offense can get to know the hitting coaches, like Lindor even said it too. It took me till later in the season to gain Quattlebaum and, and the other hitting coaches' trust last year because I didn't know them. We didn't get that time in spring training to trust each other. And Lindor had a huge month of September once he did last season. So that's – I think Zach Scott was was way too – he's an analytics guy and everything else, but, like, he's just – he was way too hands-on with – with the team last year with some of the things that he did that he wasn't putting his players clearly wasn't putting his players in the best position to succeed. Cause you see the guys, the Mets had all these all-star hitters and it's like, how do all these guys struggle collectively? Like, how is this happening? That's a big part of it. I mean, Jeff McNeil last year. I mean, what the hell? Exactly. Jeff McNeil and, and Lindor and, and I mean, Dom obviously seems to have lost his way, but but Dom's actually batting 350 within a thousand OPS in Triple A right now, so he might be back soon if he if he figured something out. Well, uh, we'll see. I mean, Nick Plummer's not necessarily hitting the cover off the baseball right now. Um, no, but he's not getting enough t- a lot of opportunities either. Yeah, that that's true. Um, I think they just need to be happy <clears> that, <throat> that Nick Plummer's obviously going to be back in Syracuse soon. Yeah, yeah, and I think he needs to be um, just to get a little you know more development, but. J.D. Davis has has actually hit pretty well now, now that he's playing more. Um, Luis Guillorme, obviously, is a, is a guy who's super valuable for the Mets and his playing time increasing. Like, like Did you see that, Luis Guillorme's father like, uh, uh, tearing into ESPN last week? No, oh, no. Uh, what happened? Yeah, Luis Guillorme Sr. said that uh, – uh, uh, let me see if I can find a tweet – that uh, called like uh, the, uh, the broadcast is one of the worst he's ever seen, that the ESPN's – don't know nothing that they uh, don't know anything. Well, that that would be accurate. Although, although in fairness, now ESPN does have like Sunday Night Baseball. They have Eduardo Perez and they have David Cohn, who are two of the most knowledgeable people in the baseball world. Like like they played. They their uh, Perez's father was a legend, obviously too. Like those guys do know what they're talking about. Like the, like they are very good. But but those national broadcasts as a whole, like. It's just like it's not the same feel when you're not following the team every day. Yeah, it's the, the <laughs> I like uh, I like this one that he, that he retweeted. He goes, uh, "Life comes at you fast." It's the guy for Tennessee who was uh, got the game with uh, 
got the hit and it's like uh, the flipping off everyone as he goes around the bases and then him uh oh yeah crying. <laughs> oh my god I, I mean is tennessee i i mean was that was there was there nothing more satisfying than seeing tennessee go down after that no i don't think so uh, it's nice to see uh notre dame in the uh college world series yep we know you're a big notre dame fan frank Frank, well, what else are you a fan of? We know it's summertime. Uh, your favorite food is hot dogs, oh, yes, of course. Oh, shit. You know, I've been... <laughs> Go ahead. You, you can tell how tired I am. Yeah, I know. Yeah, that he doesn't... He didn't have Feltman's or hot dogs on his mind. That's that's how uh, we know that he's tired. Well, I went to a Tencent dog night last night. Uh, America's first and original hot dog company is uh, Charles Feltman, uh, and Feltman's invented the hot dog, you know. And Feltman's is now a veteran-owned business, which was revived in 2015 by two Brooklyn brothers, Joe Quinn, a former Army captain, and his brother Michael, in honor of their late brother, Jimmy, killed in the September 11 attacks. With a team of military veterans that have collectively served over 110 months in combat, Feltman's is now one of the fastest-growing natural food companies in the United States. They are 100% all natural. Hot dogs are purchased, are available for purchase online at Feltman's.us and at Whole Foods. And they ship super fast. It'll be the perfect addition to your next family's cookout. So remember, use promo code FRANK for 10% off all Feltman products at Feltman's.us. That includes bratwurst and bacon with the hot dogs. That's promo code FRANK for 10% off all items at Feltman's.us. And of course, allow me Frank is presented to you by Feltman's. Yes, we are. And um, Frank, we were talking about hot dogs, summer, baseball. Um, the Braves maybe will never lose again because they're playing the Nationals and, and then they play the Cubs for three. So this streak might be going to 17 at this rate. But the Mets are playing well. We talked about it's a different team, veteran leadership, better clubhouse. Chris Bassett threw an absolute gem last night. His best start as a Met. Coming that was nice to see. As a Met. That and, was and nice to see. Did you hear what he said about about how he was able to turn it around? Yeah, Nemo. On Nito. Nito. So him and Nito weren't on the same page because he had only basically thrown to McCann until McCann got hurt. And it was that and also Mark Canna, who he was teammates with in uh with in Oakland. You know, it's it's just another example of like guys like like Canna and, and the Escobars and stuff like that. Canna told Bassett, Hey, you're not pitching to your strengths. This isn't how you pitched in, in Oakland when we played together. So, like, just, just the fact that having teammates that point that stuff out. Also, you notice Max Scherzer and Jacob DeGrom were back in the dugout with him last night. And particularly you know Max Scherzer what? had been helping him with things before. Yeah, I, 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 and as I mentioned, I'm with, uh, on this long road trip, went to Dallas, uh, watched a game in Oklahoma City, uh, Oklahoma City Dodgers against the Salt Lake Bees, uh, went up... Uh, Toward the uh, Walmart Museum, <clears throat> uh, went to uh, Louisville uh, Slugger Museum. Got a bat yesterday. Got a chance to those bats are awesome. Pitches. Got a, got even a chance to even like swing at a few pitches. How was the batting cage, Frank? That was nice. How fast? Uh, maybe about 60, 70 miles per hour. It wasn't overwhelmingly fast. You were putting the ball in play. Yeah. And and whose whose stance? I don't know if you saw my tweet, but uh, it looked like you were imitating David Eckstein's stance. I was imitating Wally Bachman's stance. Oh, okay. They did kind of have similar stances a little bit, except Bachman was a lefty. Bachman was a switch hitter. Switch hitter. Okay. Totally forgot. I only picture him batting lefty. So uh, yesterday we uh, hit Columbus and went to the Columbus Clippers game, and they had dime a dog night. Limit five. So how was that? Five for 50 cents? Holy yes. shit. The hot dogs, they were worth 10 cents. They were they were definitely not Feltman's quality. Oh, my God. Not okay. many are. So but, so you guys, you each had five hot dogs? Uh, Doug's didn't have five hot dogs. <laughs> I did. You did. So, so while we're sitting there, a couple of players for the Clippers recognize us. Of course. And then we got invited down to the clubhouse and spent like an hour talking, talking to them. And uh, one of them, uh, one of the, uh, the Clippers actually uh, played 
with uh, uh, Escobar and said that he's one of the greatest teammates he's ever been around. Oh, wow. Eduardo Escobar? He, yeah, talked about how how he's just, like, involved in everything, and everywhere he goes, he helps make a team better just by his presence. I've, I've heard similar that um, Brian Dozier loved Escobar, and Dozier's tight with Scherzer, and that's also had a little bit of an impact of Scherzer's decision to sign with the Mets because – he heard, Scherzer heard, obviously, what a great teammate Escobar is. And, and I asked Trevor May about this, too, because they played together in Minnesota. Like, Escobar is a, a favorite on, it, on every team, it seems like. Every team he's yeah, been the, on. Yeah the, yeah, the Clippers have this guy on their team that's uh, a, a veteran. Fr- Frank, what, what's, what's the guy, what was the guy's name who you spoke to who played with Escobar? Uh, Alex Young. Alex Young. Uh, okay. And who, and uh, what affiliate is the Clippers? Uh, Cleveland Guardians. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, which one? Well, uh, well, Frank fine. Neal. Uh, they actually uh, gave us some of the uh, the spread too, leftover spread. They had a uh, special spread because for Neil uh, 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 Reyes is down there uh, rehabbing. So oh, that's paid. awesome. Did he pay for it? He must have paid for it. I'm sure. Yeah. That was nice of them. Yeah. So like, yes, yeah, like 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 four players are talking to us and. They're big, uh, they're big Barstool fans, big fans uh, of uh, my videos, and uh, and uh, they were laughing about it. And uh, what's it? What's the name of that uh, that place that uh, uh, Escobar took all the players to? Uh, was it wasn't Hibachi, was it? No, in Washington. What's the name of that place? Oh shit, I forget. He keeps doing that though. Like es- Escobar treated the team and and coaches and everyone else, the staff, like a lot. It's just it's like this restaurant that he's just obsessed with. <laughs> was that brought up? Did Alex Young mention that? Yes. Yeah, he says hey, every any time, time he gets to. Uh, I forgot what the name of it was. He, but he treated uh, dinner before the uh, start of the season. Yeah, yeah, that's where that's where they went because they were in DC. Oh, here but it that, is. Here it is. Fogo de, 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 Fogo de Chao. Fogo de Chao. Fogo de Chao. Yes, it's, it's, a, it's, a, uh, it's like a Brazilian Mexican like uh, blend uh, of like whole bif- di- different types of uh, foods. And that's like uh, Escobar's favorite, uh, favorite place to go. And he's like every any city that has like a Fogo de Chao, he like seeks it out and takes all the players there. Have you ever been there, Frank, to Folk Good nope. Show? No. Nope. So it's one of those places they have the green light on. Uh, you, you put your you put your um, your thing down. If, if it's green, they'll come and bring you filet mignon, chicken, steak, anything. Oh, it's and a Rodizio. Done, you turn it red. Rodizio, yeah, 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 yeah. That's exactly what it is. Yep, that's exactly what it is. So yeah, there's a couple of Rodizios in New, uh, There's a couple of the Rodizios in Newark. Oh, okay. Nice. It's a it's a Brazilian thing. Yeah, I mean, I I love it, dude. Just imagine like putting your putting your thing down. Everybody's coming up up to you, up to you, eating, 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 and then stop. Oh my god, it's a luxury. King's yeah, killed yeah. for that shit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a lot of people don't know this about Newark. The the three the three biggest areas where Portuguese slash Brazilian residents live is Portugal, Brazil, and in Newark. Yeah, my my aunt's from Brazil, and she and her and all her family members moved to Kearney, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that North Kearney area. Yeah, it's like it, there is a a a especially down the Iron Bound section. The Iron Bound section is like yeah, Portuguese and Brazilians. Yeah. Uh, uh it's fun, Frank remember- Kearney because Kearney and Newark used to be all Irish and Italian, and now it's like Portuguese and and Brazilian. Yeah, there's like a well, Port- it's weird. Yeah, there's an annual Portuguese parade now in uh, yeah. Newark. In yeah. fact, it was this weekend. When, this I past went, weekend. when I went to Newark to uh, go to the, the Devils-Hawks game with you, Frank, I went to – the night before, I went to a bar, and it said sports bar. It was like Rosie's Sports Bar. And I was like, okay, cool. Looks like a sports bar. I'll catch the game. Oh, they only sport, spoke Portuguese there. So I was the <laughs> only white guy there. I, I had no idea what was going on. I was like, oh, because I could speak Spanish. So I was like, oh, I speak Spanish. I tried to like, yeah, that doesn't work here. And I was like, oh man, like I'm shit out of luck here. 
So I had to take like a Coors Light instead of what I wanted, but still cool. <laughs> well, yeah. You know, what, you know, what, you know what time awesome. of year it is, don't you? Besides being hot dog season, it's, it's summer shaving season. season. Yeah, it is. Yes, yes, it is. It's beach season, and uh, we that we apologize for getting into these late, but you know, better than late than never. And summer's here, and the sun is shining. Shirts are off, and your balls are smooth. You heard that right. Your friends at Manscaped are here. So make sure your beach balls are as smooth as a Floridian stand. In summer, you want to kill cold beers and barbecues, not the vibes of your pubes sitting out of your swim trunks. And let me tell you a story about swimming in a few minutes. That is why Manscaped has their performance package 4.0 to keep the party in your pants looking crisp and refreshing all summer long. Dive first into summer and by joining the 4 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped and Get ready for hot guy summer by going to manscaped.com and you get to use 20 get 20 percent off and free shipping by using code tonight. Did I mention the trimmer is waterproof too? From the shower to your lake, from your chest scruff, all the way down to your ball throw. The lawnmower 4.0 is the best trimmer around. Get 20% off and free shipping at manscaped.com. That's 20% off and free shipping at manscaped.com. This is the summer to turn your package into the full package at Manscaped. And that code again is 10% using tank. At get 20% off and free shipping at Manscaped. And your balls I mean, will thank you. Uh, free shipping. When I was in Dallas, they put us up at the uh, the Virgin Hotel. <laughs> this hotel, this hotel is a nightclub with a, with rooms attached to it. Oh my god! What do you mean? They have nice. Uh, it had valet parking. Which I don't know if I like valet parking. It's expensive, that's for sure. Yeah. So they have valet parking, and uh, on the fourth floor they have a, a a a pool, which is more like a nightclub pool, but loud music and just people just milling around, like thousands of people on this fourth floor deck. Yeah, you can't even walk around the damn pool. I mean, what do you do? What do you do in a pool if you can't just like walk, even do like uh, water walking? I mean, uh, and it overlooks the city of Dallas, the, the the skyline of Dallas. I don't get that reunion tower. But what's that? What is it? It's a big ball. They used to be by the old reunion arena. And I guess people go up there and overlook the city of Dallas. So what did, Frank, what did you think about Dallas? Other than the heat, uh, you know, you saw some historic things. And, and but how, how, would you, how would you rate the city overall? Mm, I've been to better cities. You've been to better cities. Yikes. I mean, it, it's kind of crowded in Dallas. Watch like, the Rangers lose game six at a Buffalo Wild Wings. Oh, Frank, I was hoping you weren't going to bring that up. Sad day. Strangers to the cup. It's just <laughs> a known fact. The Rangers fucking suck. But yeah, yeah, yeah. The Rangers. Pat's got that Ar- uh, that Arthur fist right now. And the, you know that meme? That's where he's got that Arthur fist. They did suck in game six. They 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 had they didn't show up on offense. They didn't show up on offense. And their only fucking goal twelve seconds later. I was at Black Bear in Hoboken watching it, which was which was really fun. Usually that's a great NFL Sunday bar. Electric atmosphere, everyone was cheering finally when they scored. Took fucking forever and uh Five seconds later, the air was let out of the, the building. You know, uh, if the uh, Rangers sure. got to Game 7, I would have been down to Houston. Yeah, I know. I know. So, so it had, so had, had to have been a, a Rangers, Rangers player on Sunday's conversation. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I'm having, I'm having trouble uh, deciphering these hints. Oh, you'll see it. It'll come out eventually. 
Frank, is that a floss stick you're chewing on? Yeah. You use it's those? Chew thing. Yes, I do. It's a slash chew thing. Flossing, it's, is it more of a flossing tool or a chewing tool? It's a little both. A little both. Did you know, 50, actually, 50. The, the dentist says that those are not as good for you as um, the regular original. Yeah. Floss. Don't, I don't use the original floss. I use these. I actually hear that's nine out of ten dentists because there's one out of ten. You ever see those commercials? They say nine yeah. out of ten dentists to prove. Yeah. So there is yeah. one out of ten that's not approving it. So just saying. Who are these doctors, by the way? Um, dental Frank, I can't how tired you are. Experts. Yeah, Frank, really, yeah. since last week when you were, Frank, you were up jumping. You were jumping and out of your chair last week. You know, uh, 15 days today. on the road is a long time. How long have you been on the road? 13? 15. 15 days straight? Yeah, that's too long. Yes. Holy shit. It's fun, but yeah, that's exhausting. I, 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 I've definitely hit a wall. Now, will you give the Mets some slack? I'll try. They've been playing better. There you go. Hey, that's something. With all things considered, they've still been playing well. With they had to go back and forth to the West Coast. That what they spent um, seventeen days on the West Coast with a six-day buffer in between the first six before another 11 day road trip. Yes, uh, yes, cuz like uh, like I said we we started uh just remember we had to record that Tuesday. Yes. Yes. So we 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 set out on the road, we went down uh we went down all the way down to um the first day we went uh to Pennsylvania into uh Virginia. Stopped a little bit uh, short of uh, Bristol, Virginia. The next day, we uh, went through Bristol, Virginia, all the way to uh, Chattanooga. We were going to go to a Chattanooga Lookouts game, but that game got rained out. And um, we met Kane on the way. Kane, that's right, the mayor of uh, mm-hmm. of Knoxville. Yep. Mm-hmm. Then we went to Birmingham, spent a couple of days in Birmingham, watched two USFL games. Went over across to Jacksonville, uh, watched uh, Top Gun 2. Up to Atlanta. How did you like Top Gun? I liked it. I, it was a lo- I actually liked it a lot better than the first one. Wow. Okay. Still got to watch it. Then Dang. we went, uh, went to the Georgia Aquarium, saw... Uh, whale, uh, beluga whales and whale sharks and dolphins, of course. Dolphins that was Frank in the tank photo. The dolphins in Atlanta seem kind of sad. <sighs> Don't even get me started with dolphins. I've watched Paradise Cove, if you guys ever seen that. It's like a documentary on how they just slash dolphins in Japan. And it, the, the main guy who like first started domesticating dolphins has like spent his whole life trying to stop domesticating dolphins because his dolphin killed itself like suicide. Crazy story. You guys got to check it out. Yikes. She's very sad. Very, very sad. Yeah. It sounds like it. You also went to the college football hall of fame. Nice. The Coke world. And I tried like about 30 different sodas (laughs) at Coke world. Yeah. This they have this international tasting room when sodas is from everywhere that Coke produces. Wad went to the Braves game, already went over that. From there, we cut to Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana, all the way to Dallas. And I did hot dog reviews along the way. I've done like 14, 15 hot dog reviews. In many different states. All these states I've never been to before, by the way, too. Went up to Oklahoma. Went to a place called Pops in Oklahoma. Did a review to Hot Dog there. And that's, they have over 600 varieties of soda in this building that looks like a giant pyramid. And the sodas are, like, on the windowsill. And it, like, creates, like, this, like, prism effect. And they have, like, sodas in the fridge, sodas everywhere. It's like on Route 66. 
Uh, stopped in Bentonville, Arkansas for the night. Went to the uh, first, went to the Walmart Museum. How was that? A little interesting. It, it goes, it's basically uh, a, 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 and it's the first Walmart. It okay. was, it was called, it originally was called Walton's Five and Ten, Five and Dime. And then he built Walmart off of this concept. And the, the original location has now been uh, made into a museum. From there, where do we go? Where do we go from Arkansas? Okay, yeah, we 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 briefly went into Kansas, then across Missouri, through St. Louis, sort of Gateway Arch. Uh, to Southern Illinois, Indiana. Then we went to Louisville for the Louisville Slugger Museum. The Columbus Clippers game yesterday. And now we're in West Wheeling, West Virginia. And... You see uh, Billy the Kid? Billy the Kid? Yeah, you know, from a town known as Wheeling, West Virginia. Ah, yes, yes, that's right. And, uh... We're going to try to hit the Lehigh Valley Iron Pigs game on the way home tonight. And that's it. The, that's how you the road. Who's, whose affiliate is that? What affiliate is Phillies. that? Phillies. Phillies. Uh, double A? Triple A. I thought, I, I thought the uh, Jersey Shore, the Blue Claws were. Or is that double? Oh, no, that's double A because they play Binghamton. No, that's single A, I think. I'm pretty sure they play Binghamton. <laughs> no, I think they play Brooklyn. Oh, you're right. You're right. It's high A. Did you watch any finals, Frank? I've been watching a little bit of it. The NBA. uh, I am so down on the NBA right now. Sucks. Fucking sucks. It's terrible. NHL playoffs have have been great. NHL playoffs have been so good. And I actually now (laughs) think the NBA is WWE faked. (laughs) It's rigged. Did you you see uh, the uh, the play the other day? One of the guys for the Warriors grabbed the Celtics' hand, slapped himself with it, and they called a technical. They called a flagrant foul on the Celtics, and then the technical for arguing. It's ridiculous. Might the, be rigged. The NBA wants the Warriors to win, so they could have uh, grandstanding uh, Stephen Kerr grandstand on the uh, championship day. I hate Stephen Kerr. Steve Kerr. I've never Imagine heard the political Steve. speech he's gonna he's gonna leave uh, on that championship. No, he'll he'll get up there and cry again. That's what he does. Yeah. No, a hundred percent. Well, I'm, you know what he, he, you know what he said. He, goes, he, 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 he talked about one time. He goes, I don't know why we embrace the uh, the flag or the national yeah. anthem. Both need changing of a more inclusive nature. And then I'll go. And he's then I'll go. Touch. Stop complaining person. about the seven dollar gas prices. Just drive a Prius like me. Oh no! He actually said that he actually, you know, you know, he actually said that he actually, he actually talked about the gas prices. There's nothing wrong with the gas prices. Cheap gas has been choking the earth. Yeah, he's he's a fucking idiot. You know, so, you know he said he says he, he he Steve Kerr Steve Steve Kerr actually said the America is a reprehensible nation. Yeah, I'm I'm pretty much done with him. So I, I, I <laughs> and really, uh, one, like time, one time, one time, yeah, a couple years ago, uh, Golden State Warriors went to China. They were playing March of the Volunteers, and Steve Kerr stood out like this, <laughs> and like I was crying. <laughs> so he said that uh, when they went to China, Steve Kerr went to the to, went to the uh, the grave of uh, Mao, and and he said that he worked. He said that never before has he seen such a beautiful man, the hero of the world. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, Steve Kerr actually thinks that we should be more like uh, the CCP. You know, I, um, I, I, I'm I, starting to realize I might hate the NBA. No, it's terrible. There's nothing. Uh, I don't think it's there's anything getting good about so it. So bad. It got so woke. Like it's just like now it's just getting stupid. It's I hate not- to sound like that old guy, but like. Beyond that, beyond that, whatever, yeah, you could say that too. But no, the quality of play, like, every, it's just chucking up three pointers the whole time, and the guys are too athletic. Either don't give the effort on the defensive end, 
to put to be able to guard the guys or and, the guys and are just Kyrie, Kyrie Irving says that he's not being appreciated by the Brooklyn Nets. And it's just people just crying and wanting trades every year. It's That's like literally it you'll go to a team and then you're like, all right, I, I don't want to play here anymore. I'm not going to try. I want to trade. Like, that's been going on for a while. The super teams started to ruin it uh, with the Celtics and, and the Heat. Like, it's just really, really gotten worse and worse. Um, but beyond that, we can talk about this all day. Uh, we're running out of time here, so I just want to get to a couple of Ask the Tank questions. Um, yep. Andy at Price XXI says, Mr. Tank, do you agree with the Cleveland Indians name change? Speaking of, you just read the Columbus Clippers game, the affiliate of the Cleveland now Guardians. Do you agree with their name change? And what name would you have gone with instead of the Guardians if you had to choose? I do not agree with their name change, but uh, I would have much preferred Spiders. The Spiders. Why is that? Well, the, the, the uh, Cleveland Spiders were a team in the 1890s. Now they might have set the record for the worst season in baseball history. But you know what? Cy Young played there before the, it all fell apart. Uh it has a good history, good name. It's a good name. Guardians was using the XFL. It's terrible. So you're going for the for the throwback there. And yeah. that's why uh yeah, so I, I understand that. Um free your mind at four two oh three one op says if the Atlanta Braves were a soda, what would they be? Uh oh. I can only think Coca Cola. Why is that? Why would that be? Atlanta. Oh, is is Coca Cola headquarters in Atlanta? Coca Cola was invented in Atlanta. Invented in Atlanta. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's where the Coke World was. It's a, they have a, Oh yeah. They have Coke World there, which is like a, a Coca Cola museum, and they have like the the original recipe vault is there. They have like a manufactured their top manufacturing places there i also stopped by hershey park too the hershey world on the way down here in pennsylvania how was that that was good frank um did you know i went to hershey you went to hershey park correct in pennsylvania yeah i went to uh, hershey world i went to we went to hershey park well, me and my brother were young, very young. I was like two years old, maybe not even. Our parents brought us there, and uh, we were able to do the uh, the Hershey factory tour. Yeah, that's what we did. But me and my dad couldn't go in because, like, only my mom and brother could because I was, I guess, I was a baby. What a peanut and I, I allergy. Go- no, 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 not because the peanut allergy. Because I wouldn't put the hairnet on. I refused to put the hairnet on when I was like, I was probably like two or maybe a little younger. And, and so then me and my dad had to stay outside because I, I just, oh, they wouldn't was no hair not, they didn't have a hairnet. It was just like, I guess it's set up differently now. Back. Yeah. Back then this was probably 1998. So they, they did not let you in without a hairnet back then. And, and as a finicky uh, baby toddler, whatever I was, would, would not put a hairnet on. So and I had, I, had lo- I had long hair back then, too. So. Well, yesterday um, I had to wear uh, goggles going through uh, the Louisville Slugger. Oh, because all the shavings of the wood <laughs> yep. and all that stuff? Oh, uh, that's yeah. smart. Yeah, yeah. It's like wood shop. Yeah. Did yeah. you see the, any weird uh, knob bats? I, I really want to ask. I haven't gotten the chance to ask McNeil about this, but why he uses that weird knob on the end of his bat. Yeah, I, I asked the guy. It's not made by Louisville Slugger. Not made by Louisville Slugger. Wait, yes. wait, the, the special knob bat. Yeah, the axe handle bat. Yeah, the axe handle. He's like the only one who uses that. They can make any bat that any player wants, and they have special models for every player. And every time a player wants a new model, they create it and name it after them. For example, um, uh, Josh Harrison just uh, came up with a new model, so it's now an H like. 435 bat. That's pretty cool. Well, so what about, so McNeil, that's his yeah. bat. Like, that's his own bat, the knob. Yeah. But who makes it then if, if Louis Bersoga doesn't? He didn't, the guy know. didn't tell you? Yeah. All right. Well, um, if he's at his locker today, I'm going to try and get to the bottom. I've been meaning to ask him that for like two weeks. So, um, and no one's ever asked. I feel like nobody, it's been pointed out that he uses the weird knob, but but no one's asked him why. Or like what that does? Maybe I mean he likes to choke up, so maybe that kind of 
improves his control of the bat. I'm, I'm not really sure. So um, on, on that note, though, we are we are out of time this week. Uh, remember to rate, download, review, and subscribe. Frank has had a crazy and very long road trip, and it's about to conclude. A lot of fun stuff that he's done. And, of course, um, hope you enjoyed listening to his tales on the road. So, Frank, uh, without further ado, take us out with a little music if you have any. <sighs> I'm tired. I'll see you guys next week. <laughs> see you next Quick week. Like and next subscribe. Week. And hopefully the music will return. Thank you. All right, let me stop recording. So the reason my thing kept going in and out.